What's up guys? Today's video I'm going to go over step by step on how I installed this paver walkway. Everything was done per the manufacturer specifications as well as ICPI standards. So please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments please leave them below. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. So what I did here the walkway that's going out here is going to be three feet wide, um, but I marked out four foot. I added six inches to the left and six inches to the right. Uh, that's because you always want your base to be six inches wider than uh, your patio, or patio or walkway or whatever you're putting in. You want a wider base because otherwise if, if your pavers are all the way on the edge of the base, they'll start to teeter over time. Um, this way if the base extends past, you know, the, that paver will lay flat for forever so I just finished getting the base dug out and I set up my string the bottom end of the string is the uh, where I want the top of the pavers to be and then the top end of the string is is where I want the pavers to be up top and then what I do is I just go along and I measure from the string down to the dirt and make sure I have at least nine inches um, it could be a little more, but I don't want anything less because I want at least a six inch base on here. Um, the sub base here, this doesn't need to be perfect. You can have some humps and some dips in it. Uh, th that's fine. And uh, actually I'm getting ready to run the plate compactor over the base, the sub base here, um, to make sure it's, it's nice and firm. So I got the sub base compacted and I just put down my geofabric. All you have to do is, is roll this stuff out and put some staples in it to hold it in place. You don't need to go crazy with the staples. You just need to put enough staples in it so it's not going to move. And then where you have these seams, you want to make sure you have at least six inches of, uh, of overlap. And, um, and I want to point something out here too. Like I said, this is the uh, it's geofabric, which is a, a woven fabric. And it's made of polyester. Um, it's it's completely different than uh, than your standard landscape fabric. Uh, so you just want to make sure you're getting the right stuff. What this fabric does not only helps block any weeds that come through, um, but it, it stabilizes the the soil. So it's time to get started on the base. What I have here is three quarter modified. Some areas they may call it DGA stone or three quarter minus, but basically all it is is stone uh, up to three quarter in size all the way down to stone dust. And uh, the reason you use this is because it has a great compaction ability. Um, once this is down and compacted, it's gonna be almost as hard as asphalt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put three inches down, break it out, get it pretty level and then compact it and then I'm gonna put another three inches down rake that out I'm gonna get that really level and then compact that so let's get started So the first lift is compacted. You can see it's uh, it's pretty flat. Um, one thing I want to point out is, in addition to the plate compactor, you also need a hand tamper. Um, that's so you can do the edges, like up here in this corner and stuff. Um, you know, along that slab and and back there. You want to, you know, make sure you have one of them to get into tight spots. Here's the compacted base. I have at least seven inches throughout. I did it in uh, I did it in three lifts. I put about three inches down, and then I added another two inches. I'm sorry, I put three inches down. I compacted it. I put about another two inches, compacted it, and then I added about another two inches. Um, the next step will be to add sand. You want to get yourself some good screed poles. What I have here is a one-inch gas pipe. I have two of them. Um, I, I've seen guys use uh, PVC. Uh, you don't. You don't want to use that. The, the reason why is 
we level this base as much as possible but even when it's done it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect there'll be some small dips here and there and you don't want the PVC to flex as you're dragging that sand down um, so that's why you want to get some good sturdy sturdy steel pipes like I said this is black pipe it's gas pipe um, they, they don't have much flex at all all right you can see I got my sand piled up here I got my pipes running I checked them they're nice and level now if there's another guy here working with me we would just one guy would be on each side and we'll screed it down uh, but since I'm by myself I actually I'll have to get into sand a little bit move it around with my hands here and just start working backwards You have a, a trowel handy. Go ahead and find a piece of this. And that's that's how you do it. I'll smooth out the sand and I'll keep this trowel with me as I'm laying the pavers, so as I'm going, if I see some imperfections, I'll just smooth it out real quick and then, you know, keep going. So when you, you get going and laying your pavers, you wanna make sure you keep your dead blow hammer nearby and uh, your trowel. The trowel is so, as I mentioned, you see any imperfections out there in the sand ahead of you, you just simply smooth them out. The dead blow is if, um, if you notice one of your seams aren't lining up perfectly straight and you gotta just give the pavers a little tap to get them into place. The other thing is uh, you want to watch your seams with this seam here. You want to make sure, I mean this is a narrow walkway, it's three foot. Um, with this random pattern it's it's hard to not have any seams but you just want to make sure you don't have a seam running straight down you know the whole thing. Um, I try to keep the seams the, the three feet or less um, so you just keep that in mind. The other thing is when you're dropping these in, it's best to just drop them flat in. Line them up, drop it flat. Because <clears throat> you don't want to drop it in on an angle because then it'll you know, dive into the sand a little bit. Another thing you're gonna to want to do is get yourself a uh, string line set up. When you're doing a walkway, especially a long one, um, you don't want to start drifting. So I pulled the string, I just have it tied to a brick down here and I got a spike in down there at the door. And now I know I'll be able to keep a nice straight line all the way down. Now that all the pavers are down, it's time to add the edge restraints. These are pretty self-explanatory. It's just a plastic strip and you add these uh, 10 inch nails. Um, I put them every other hole. Sometimes around the bends, I'll add a couple more. The only thing to keep in mind, these pavers aren't compacted yet. Um, so when you add this edge restraint, Make sure it's about halfway down the paver because this paver's this paver's going to settle some, and uh, you don't want this restraint to be even or above this paver. So it'll probably end up being about I don't know three eighths of an inch down the paver after this is compacted because these these pavers should set into the uh, concrete sand by about half an inch. This is the compactor I use. Um, for setting the pavers. It's it's lighter duty than my big compactor um, And it also has this rubber mat. You can see I, I added that that's a that's a custom job here I I welded this angle iron on the front and back and uh, I ordered that mat off eBay and, and put it on there I did that so you don't scuff the pavers some guys will run the compactor right on it um, And they're not worried about the minimal scuffs. I just I like to avoid that so 
you get yourself a, a compactor with uh, with a rubber mat on it. I've also heard of people using a, a piece of carpet too. So now that the pavers are nice and compacted, it's time to uh, add the polymer sand. Um, this stuff, I'll basically dump small piles and then just sweep it into the joints. After I get a nice layer in all the joints and the, thing, and the pavers are still covered in the sand, I'll actually compact it one more time. Now the only thing you need to make sure is that uh, the pavers are completely dry because water activates this sand. So you, you, the pavers can't be damp at all. Um, you don't even want to do it if you know if you're expecting rain, like. It The polymer's all swept in. I got the joints all pretty much filled up. Some of these outside edges, you don't really worry about too much yet because it'll keep spilling over the edge until you get some dirt over there. But the main body's all, all swept in. And now I'm gonna use that compactor again to compact all the pavers. And the reason why I do this a second time is so the polymer sand will settle to the bottom of the joint because you don't want that joint only half filled with the sand. You can see, after compacting it, it settled down in those joints a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and re-sweep the polymer in to get all the joints filled up to where I want them to be. That's the final sweep in. So now I'm gonna take uh, my blower here and just hit it all real lightly. I'm not even gonna hit the throttle on the blower. I'm just gonna let it idle to blow off all this excess still sitting on the paver. Um, you could take your time and sweep it all off, but I find it to be you know, faster and easier just to use the blower. You wanna make sure you get this polymer sand off of any surface that you don't want it to stick to. So if you, if you leave it all up like this in this joint, that's how that joint's gonna look once it's set. So I'll end up blowing them all off until they they end up looking like about this one. And I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down. So I got the excess all blown off and the joints all look how I want them to look. So now it's time to add the water. You can see here, you don't want anything too high pressure. Just set it on shower or something. And I go and I give the whole walkway about two good soaks. And then that's it. Everything's done. As soon as this is wet, the polymer gets activated and the walkway is ready to be used.